PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. When we think of the blood, the plasma is the liquid that holds all the cells. That includes white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, proteins, and other nutrients. When we create platelet-rich plasma, we remove the vast majority of red blood cells and white blood cells, and we concentrate the platelets. Platelets are really important for healing. So when we think about cutting a finger, platelets are recruited to the site of the injury, and then they release all types of molecules. Specifically, they release granules that have growth factors and signal signaling messages to cells and tissues in the nearby area. Those signaling molecules help with the healing process. So when we use PRP for medicinal uh, treatments for patients with injuries or pain, we're trying to harvest the power of the healing. So we take a concentrated solution of platelets and put it, put it or place it in an injured area. When the platelets are in that area, they release the granules that help with pain relief and improving function. I like to think of platelet-rich plasma as an orthobiologic. And what that means is we're using our own body or our own body's biology to help with healing. I don't usually like to say regenerative medicine or a regenerative treatment a whole lot because to me that implies that I'm growing or creating a brand new structure, like I'm creating new cartilage, a new meniscus, or a new lumbar disc. And really that's not the case. I really try to emphasize to patients that these treatments are really focused on improving pain, improving function, and trying to stop or slow down a degenerative process. One thing I like to tell patients about platelet-rich plasma is that it's not stem cell therapy. I've been using platelet-rich plasma in my care and treatment of patients for over the past 10 years, so I have a lot of confidence in its ability to help patients. I think that PRP help fills a gap in patient treatments for musculoskeletal injuries. Commonly, I'll see patients that come into my clinic and they've been evaluated by an orthopedist and told, hey, you don't have severe enough problem or a severe enough disease that you need surgery. At the same time, these patients have tried extensive conservative care, including physical therapy, anti-inflammatory medicines, bracing and or corticosteroid injections. So platelets try to fill that gap of providing pain relief, improving function, but not requiring immediate surgery. The research on PRP has shown that it's most effective for patients with mild to moderate joint arthritis and for partial tendon and ligamentous tears. More and more research has been done over the past 10 to 20 years focused on knee arthritis. And the research is showing that platelet-rich plasma should be considered a first-line treatment for treating pain related to knee arthritis. When we follow patients with mild to moderate knee arthritis after a PRP injection and compare it to those patients in other groups who have been treated with corticosteroids or what we call gel shots, which are visco supplementations, the patients in the PRP group have longer term pain relief. I like to tell patients to consider getting a booster injection of platelet rich plasma at approximately one year. What the research is showing us is that over time, the platelet effects will wear off and getting it repeated can help slow or limit the progression of knee arthritis. This could potentially put off the need for surgery later in the future. Additionally, more and more studies are trying to fine tune the dose of platelets that we give to patients. So just like a patient that has hypertension or high blood pressure or diabetes, those types of medicines will be used in different dosages to provide maximum benefit or maximum relief. Platelet-rich plasma is no different. 
studies are really trying to fine tune what's the amount of platelets or specifically what's the concentration needed to provide the best term or, or best long-term pain relief. In the knee joint, more and more studies are starting to show that approximately eight to 12 billion platelets in a patient with mild to moderate arthritis can provide lasting relief out to one year. So on the day of the procedure, the patient will be brought to our lab and usually either 60 cc's of blood is drawn for large joints or tendon areas or 30 cc's of blood is drawn for smaller joints and tendon areas. After the blood is drawn, it is put into a centrifuge. The only thing that we add to the blood is an anticoagulant, and that prevents the blood from clotting during the spinning process. We do two spins of the blood that helps to heavily concentrate the platelets. While the blood is spinning, the patient is brought to either my fluoroscopy suite, which is where I do x-ray guided procedures, or my ultrasound suite. And during that time, I will evaluate the tissue, get the patient comfortable and positioned appropriately, and we'll look at where the platelets will be injected. All of my injections are done with image guidance, whether that's ultrasound or x-rays, which is the fluoroscopy. This ensures that the medicine is put in the exact or most precise location where it's really needed. The injection procedure usually takes less than 10 minutes. After the injection, it's not unusual for the patient to have some mildly increased pain for the first few days. This is secondary to the inflammatory process that's happening within the joint or the tendon or soft tissue area. Post-procedure instructions really depend on the area treated. If we're injecting platelets into a joint, I usually want them to have somewhat protected or light activities for the first one to two weeks, and then we gradually increase them from there on. If I'm injecting platelets into a tendon or a ligament or a soft tissue, that rehab is more protected. So for the first two to four weeks, they will have more modified activities. And then from weeks four to six, increasing activities and strenuous exercises or movements will be recommended. Ultimately, this is really based on how the patient is feeling. We will adjust it more uh, quickly or slowly based on their overall pain level. Patients commonly ask me when they can expect maximum pain relief from their injection. For patients that receive joint injections, I like to tell them we should notice significant pain improvement by four to six weeks. If there's just modest or mild pain improvement at that six week follow-up time, we may consider repeating a joint booster injection. For tendons and ligaments, the recovery process is slower. I like to tell patients that the average time to maximum improvement after a tendon or ligamentous injection is approximately three to four months. Again, this is variable, but it's not a immediate pain relief. There's a big difference between platelet-rich plasma and cortisone injections. A cortisone injection takes effect almost immediately. I'll tell patients after a cortisone shot to start expecting improvement within typically 72 hours. And then usually by one to two weeks, they're, pay they're feeling significantly better. Platelet-rich plasma, on the other hand, is very different. It's not unusual for them to actually hurt more or feel slightly more pain with the first few days, if not the first week. And then there's a very gradual relief over the following weeks and or months. Typically, steroids wear off within six to 12 weeks after an injection, and platelets are really just primarily hitting their stride between that six week and 12 week mark. Again, it's very rare for a steroid injection to last out to one year, but for PRP injections, especially within the joint, that's what we're looking for is essentially significant pain improvement as well as functional improvement out to one year. One other thing to consider when 
evaluating steroids compared to platelets. Steroids are toxic to cartilage cells and tendon cells, so repeated use of them can really harm the tissue and weaken the tissue. Platelet-rich plasma or platelets specifically are helpful to those cells and help try to stimulate them and rejuvenate them. So there's really no toxic effects at all from the, platelet, the, from the platelets that are injected. Currently, PRP is not covered by insurance. Patients can use their flexible savings accounts or healthcare savings accounts to pay for these procedures. One exception is TRICARE. I do have friends and colleagues who have told me that patients on TRICARE have been successful in receiving reimbursement for platelet-rich plasma treatments. When I evaluate a patient for PRP treatment, I want to make sure that they've had a good course of conservative care. So if they've never had, say, their knee or shoulder issue worked up, I will do the workup to make sure that the diagnosis is correct. That could include x-rays, an ultrasound, an MRI, as well as physical therapy. So when I start thinking about a PRP treatment, I want to make sure that they've failed good conservative care. And so usually that will involve the physical therapy, medicines, possible injections, activity modifications. If I see a patient and I feel that they've had really good conservative care and they're not a surgical candidate, then I think PRP is a good treatment option. So if a patient is interested in PRP treatment or they're curious to know if they're a candidate, please seek us out on the web, call our office, make an appointment. You can self-refer directly to our clinic for evaluations, and I hope to see you.